South Africa does not have uh, drugs. They go somewhere to take drugs and after come in here with drugs, you know. South Africa does not have drugs. It's, it's fake drugs. The good drugs are not in Soweto. The good drugs are not in other places. The good drugs are in CBD, starting from CBD and going to Starbucks. The same person who gave me the drugs set me up and gave the police the number that was on my luggage. And they started to search while I was sitting, waiting for the flight to come. My own uncle sent me to Brazil. It came to my medulla of Belangat and I would say that, what kind of uncle is this one? Then I was sentenced in, 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 in Brazil. I stayed in prison. I was sentenced four years, eight months, but I stayed five years. God was working on my character because it was dirty character. Bon dia, maman. Bon dia. Como está? Tô bem. E você? Oh, bem. Uh, você fala português? Fala, imagina. Fala bem. Eu falo uh, 50% português. Você? 100% bem. 100%? Sim. Si. Hey, hey. Mama, how are you? I'm fine, Indy, sir. I'm good. You have an interesting story um, that my producer told me about and I thought that it would be an amazing thing to have a conversation with you on this platform but for somebody who's looking at you right now who are you? Uh, my name is Sizagele Mapupa yes I was born and brought up in Soweto <laughs> I'm a real Sowetan ne? That's yeah. me. Yes. Where in Soweto? Uh, Orlando East? Shawelo. Oh, Shawelo. Yes. Oh, Ubulabula Shangani food? No, Ubulabula Nyakuluma. Oh, Nyakuluma. Yes. Um, tell me about your story. Um, my producer told me that um, you stayed in Brazil for some years. How did that come about? Yeah, you know, you know, God is amazing and his ways are not our ways. I went to Brazil because of the journey. Uh, I, st I, I never started in Brazil. I started selling drugs around and I was selling these drugs for my uncle, my own uncle. What happened? My mother passed away. So my uncle said, no, come over and stay with me. And I already knew that my uncle was an addict you know, taking drugs and selling them. So I allowed that. I said, okay, it's fine. I'm going to stay with him. Then fast forward, I went to stay with him. So he said to me, no, remember that um, your mother passed away and we have to push, you know. So we started pushing. So I started going to clubs like brothels and strip clubs. I started to sell drugs there, but it never started there because you have to make friendship with people before you sell. You know, you buy them booze, you know, and then they will tell you that I'm taking ecstasy. So you start giving them before they sell. You have to make them and or buying them so that they may be able to come to you. So I was doing that. I was supplying them with drugs, different or, or types of drugs, heroin, you know, and all those stuff. Because my uncle, I told him that if we must get these people to s sell these drugs for us, so we must make friends and make friendship, you know. So what happened? Yeah, we, we, we you know, we tried to buy them. And then lately, as we, we were friends together, I started to tell them that, no, you know, I'm selling the drugs. So what happened? We used to communicate with these girls, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, you cannot do things like, for an example, you cannot strip like if you're sober, you must take something, you know, because you know, you, people are there, audiences are there, and you have to be able to start stripping, taking your clothes. So they used to take different drugs. So I tell them that um, I'm selling drugs. So they said, no, we can push for you because our clients take some drugs too. You know, in brothels, people, they don't go normal. Others, if they don't take drugs, they, 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 they smoke uh, some booze or drugs and take some booze, you know, like, for example, brandies, so that they may be hyper to do the activities that they usually do. So what happened? 
I started to go to strip clubs. I cannot name them because I don't like to name some other people that don't like it, you know, in, in the internet. So what happened, uh, they start selling drugs for me. So I was getting money from them. So we have built a relationship now. So I was selling for my uncle, but my uncle was not counting. Remember that he was my own uncle trusting me that I would do good things. So, you know, doing drugs, you have to look good, you know. So it came uh, this thing that you have to wear expensive things so that they may respect you. Now, here comes pride because you think that you're a queen, you're a slave queen, and people, they have to respect you. You know what I mean? So I started to do those things and different platforms. I used to go there. So those girls, they were selling drugs for me. So I was taking money. So there's where I was hiding drugs and I was even going to hotels now they, you know, I'm known now because of cash. You know, sometimes if you are in the world, you will think that money is it's all, but money is not all. Because you must be known and people will be clapping hands for you, you know, shoulders. You cannot even greet people. That kind of pride that you, you, you are. And if you go there to the clubs, you don't even go to the line. They will respect you. Come, you know. So you try to gain, get, get dignity, but on, on the wrong way, you know. Mm. So it's what I was doing. So I sold drugs. I sold drugs. My uncle said, no, man, you must graduate, you know, because, you know, there are levels. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he said, yeah. oh, you, you know, you must, you must, you must graduate, says again. I said, no, yes, you know, you know what I mean? Because that pride is there. And you imagine America is introducing me to go to America now. It's another style. Oh, I will be, you know, they will, they will know me and I'll see this kind of, you know, it's just things that are simple. You know, in this whole entire world, there are things that are so small, but we think that are big by being known who you are or where you are. And those things does not count, you know. Mm. Peace count in life, you know. And um, be content on what you have until you go somewhere. It's something else. But people, they think that, by getting money, there's no spirit of fulfillment because I was getting money. But when my uncle said to me, go to Brazil, then I said, oh, wow, that's a chance. Wow. You know, I can go to Latin Americano. You know, they call it Latin Americano. So I agreed. Wow. So what kind of drugs were you selling? Was it cocaine, weed, or something else? No, weed was so cheap. <laughs> I was not selling weed. I was selling ecstasy. I was selling and taking ecstasy, you know. Why I was taking ecstasy? Because ecstasy, the meaning of ecstasy is being high, hyperactive, you know, to move. You know, because if you are selling drugs, you have to be hyper. They'll be calling air and calling air. And so you have to focus and be moving, you see. So I was selling ecstasy. I was selling urine. I was selling boss. You know, there was no nyaup at that time, you know. Mm. There was crack. And then I was selling crack. What year was that? Ah, it was two, two, it's 2002. Say, <laughs> there is a spirit in human beings that if you want money, like people who are killing people, they don't think that they've got kids. You know what I mean? They think of that moment of taking that kids and doing something else with them. But I don't think that even them, they've got kids. So that time I thought about money, you know, I thought about uh, being famous. And we, we spoken with my uncle that as you're coming back, you're going to have some Land Rover V8, you know what I mean? And it was on my head. South Africa does not have uh, drugs. They go somewhere to take drugs and after come in here with drugs, you know? South Africa does not have drugs. It's, it's fake drugs. If they mix that, like for example, there is uh, levels. There are good drugs that are not in Soweto. The good drugs that are not in other places, the good drugs are in CBD, starting from CBD and going to suburbs. Jeez, man. So CBD, Johannesburg, all the CBDs in South Africa? Yes. So Johannesburg? And Sentin, Sen Rosebank, yes. You know why? Because there are these clubs, ne? and now things have, have changed, and so until they've got such things. Yeah. You know, they've got brothels, and it's now, now, it's not hidden like before, you, you know what I mean? Because of uh, the population of people who are not working, they think um, sleeping with many men and taking drugs is a good thing for them that mm -hmm. time. You know, you must not blame people because they think it's a good thing to do that, you know. And what God goes, you know, with, with this uh, thing that I'm not working, so how I will survive, you know. Mm. And starting sleeping with people, you sleep with them first time, but second time, you, you will think that, ah, how can I do this sober? 
I must take something. You understand me? So people from CBD, they're not selling the drugs in Soweto like the CBD ones. They mix them. Like for an example, they take starch and begin to mix them. And remember, starch, it makes you to, to be thirsty, you know. So you will long for something. So if you take it, you will uh, feel like taking it again more and more, you know. So it's what they are doing. Can we agree that the place whereby a lot of drugs are being sold in South Africa is Johannesburg CBD. Yes, uh, because uh, even the the girls that are using, remember what they, they do, they make them to be slaves. They make them to sell the drugs and begin to sleep with people. It's how they are getting people. You know, a woman, it's powerful. <laughs> you know, Jezebel can be powerful on words <laughs> and seducing. You, you, you know what I mean? Mm. So they get this thing by getting girls. They know if they're somewhere. You know, uh, this nowadays, there is nothing people they fear. Like women, they don't have uh, um, this uh, dignity. They will do everything that they I'm not saying everybody, mm. you know. I know the, the viewers sometimes, they say, no, not me, you know. But I'm saying... Like 80% of uh, women, they don't care to do anything, anywhere. I want to stand, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you see me today, there's nothing about it. And if I can get something and no, I don't know you tomorrow, you know, mm. such things. During your time when you were, when you were selling drugs in, in, in Josie, how much were you making in a day? I was making a lot. And that time, imagine in 2002, I, I remember it was strip clubs and brothels. So sometimes in Jobek, I would take 5,000. Remember, I was taking the money from people. And I remember I would gather in some places and this place. And after I go to, you know, St. in Rosebank, okay, I, uh, if I'm uh, assuming it was maybe 20,000. Hmm. You got arrested in, in, in Brazil. Tell me about the day when you left South Africa, how you, you, you were able to hide the drugs passing or Artambo. Tell me about that. You know, I, I never reached or uh, tumble, you know. You know what happened? My, un my uncle told me that you have to graduate, remember? Then we started speaking and fixing things. And my uncle said, yo, baby, don't worry. We have already paid, you know. What makes me to, to have ego to go to Brazil? It was because my uncle, I know that they can pay and no police can touch me, you know. I'm not trying to expose police. They're good police. They're police who think that their money is very low mm -hmm. not to have it. So what happened? My uncle told me, oh, sis, you know, I'm going to pay. Don't worry. Before you go there, you're not going to touch anything. We just touch and just check in. Everything, you know, is going to be ready. It's paid off. So I had that ego that, no, my uncle has already paid. I mean, I'm just going for a holiday, you know. Mm. I took it like that. So you went to Brazil. Yes. What happened then? Then I, you know, God can speak, <laughs> but we don't listen. God can speak in mysterious way, in a way whereby we are so ignorant of hearing the voice of God. God was speaking to me, but because of um, a rebellious spirit, you know, thinking that I'm Sizagele, you know. What happened? God spoke and I said, ah, no, this voice. I cannot hear this voice. Evil, you know. Remember that while I was here in our country, South Africa, I was a church goer, going to church. Uh, I was going there because I wanted to show off that um, I was putting Isimiaki and I had some expensive bags and I can put dollars in the altar, you know. Mm. So going there, I was praying, but I was not saved. Going to church, but salvation was not unto me. And there was no character in me that time, you know, because I was in the church and having money. So what happened to me? Uh, you know, boasting, you know what I mean? Uh, hey, Mina Cesar in you're even in Brazil, nothing will happen unto me. Then my uncle said, okay, Cesar, we are humble man. I said, okay, I'm ready. You, you know, with courage that, ah, I'm going to go to Brazil and I'm, I'm going to make it. They've already paid. So we set up time. And then I start going to Brazil. I prepare everything. I went to Brazil. You know, there's something that happened. For the first time I landed in Brazil, uh, I was in the hotel. The name that my uncle gave it to me is the similar name, but not the hotel that I was supposed to be. And God was speaking to me and saying, Sister again. Just get off of this thing. But I was so rebellious and said that I want this money and I want this uh, Land Rover, you know. Yeah. So what happened? I could not hear the voice. I was not looking at that I will be arrested. I said, I'm going to go. So I have booked in this hotel, the wrong hotel, but with the name that they gave it to me. So while I was there, 
there is something in Brazil, the code that you're calling South Africa is not a similar but that year. So I lost everything. I don't know how. And God was speaking to me that, no, leave this thing. But I was so persistent that, no, I'm going to do this thing. No, uh, the devil can let, not tell me anything. I'm going to make it. I'm going to do this thing. I know. I know myself. I used to do it in, in brothels. I used to do it where. So no, why now? Brazil is a small country. No, you know, I even put God on there that, ah, God will make me to do it. Ah, you know. Mm. So I went there. But you know how the enemy works? He will connive things that as if things will be fine. So lately I got to contact my uncle that, oh, I'm in this hotel. Then I asked, they were speaking English. Then the guy who's supposed to get me from Brazil, he was able to locate, allocate me there. Then he came and uh, started to do what? To change me in the hotel. Because if you, you do this syndicate thing, you must not be in the pe popular place because police are always looking. So they went to just a, a place that is, you know, a lousy place so they can put me there so that people cannot see me. Because in Brazil, they still people, like if they see you that you are there for another person, they can steal you. They don't care who bought a ticket for you, yeah. you know. So what happened? And then the guy hired me in that place. What the guy, the guy hired me and then it was early in the day. You know, when I saw the guy, I don't want to tell you lies. I saw the guy with this kind of perfume, with his legs, the tall guy. I said, this one, it's a black American. Remember me in Brazil? I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, this, this is the guy that I want. But, you know, it was like part of the job that I'm doing. You know, it, 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 it works with fornication and lust at that time. You know, because if you're doing such thing, you love those kind of things to be seen with a good guy and all those things. So what happened when I saw that, that guy? I said, no, oh, wow, this guy. Then I stayed in that hotel. Lately, I'm hearing a knock. Qua, qua, qua. I'm like, oh is this now because nobody knows me in this place you know and it was the guy i'm looking in that small thing you know in the door and then i just saw that guy and then i'm like maybe he want to say something then he started to say to me can we go out i'm like no i came here to do the job and how can i go out you know i was sexy remember that i could not expect somebody you know i was so slim that time okay. with a tiny body so the guy started to say uh started to pour out dollars you know in the bed and you know, like, uh, I want to buy you, uh, what is it? Because you don't want to go out. Can we have some, you know, some chart? Yeah. Uh, no strings attached. You just hold this money, then, you know, it's like that. Then I started to say, no, it's where I was shocked now. In the Latin American country, I don't know anybody, but I know just this guy. I said, no, no, I don't do that. He said, why? It's normal. Hey, we always do this thing, you know. I'm like, no, I cannot do this thing. I'm, I'm not here alone. I'm here because my uncle sent me here. You think like I'm like this girls, you know, I changed the tone and everything. And then guy said, no, uh, come on, let's do this thing. I said, no, I'm going to tell my uncle I cannot do this. And the guy said, no, you know how handsome I am. I cannot force you, you know. And I, there was a motive on the guy now that say that, okay, this one does not want to share this thing with me, the bed with me, and then I will show this girl. You know, I didn't know what is what was what what was on his mind. Mm. You know that time. So what happened? The guy went and thought. Otherwise, I said that I will show this girl. You know, and then the second day he came and said that where can I put your drugs? I'm like, no, oh, I came here to Brazil to take the stuff. How can you ask me such question? It's you. You must know where can the drugs be. You no. Know? Okay. Said okay. The, then the third day he said, um, on the fourth day I was in Sao Paulo. We are going to go to Rio de Janeiro, Copa de Cabana. Then I said, yes. He said, but then he started to say, ah, but why can't you, you don't want to give me this small thing? It's easy. Just give me this thing. I give you, give me, and then are you going to benefit something or give you some dollars? I said, no, I don't want to do this thing. And I was nasty because I could not tell my uncle that what happened. If maybe I told my uncle they should have changed the guy, you know, and changed the hotel. But I was just thinking of money and I was just thinking of coming back and just they see these drugs in South Africa and driving low and drove. Wow. So what happened afterwards? And then the guy prepared the things. Remember, I'm going to take a bus to yeah. go to Rio de Janeiro. Then he prepared the things. But later did I know that when I was having drugs on my hand and about to go to Rio de Janeiro, the bus was there, the guy came like Judas Iscariot and kissed me. And I cannot say, no, the police are here. And then the drugs are here. And then he just kissed me a deep kiss. And then I, he said, but you, 
can stay. I said, no. And I was alarmed that because, and he was like, oh, you, I'm Judas to you. Bye-bye. You know, you are going to prison. But I, I never knew. And funny enough, while I was in Rio de Janeiro, <laughs> you know, the enemy can make you to do things. While I arrived in Rio de Janeiro in the hotel, you know, they, saw, they see me, they like, do you want a man? You know, in Brazil, it's how they live. And I'm like, no, a man. Because that job I was doing, it was dirty. So the spirit that was in me, it was attracting this fornication and lust and adultery because of what I was doing. And it was on me because that time I used to do those things. I used to go out with men, you know. If you are in this um, agenda, you'll be doing that thing without you knowing that is a spirit in you, you know. So I was doing that kind of thing. So I said, no, I don't want. Then I stayed one day. Then I went to the hotel. Imagine I was re in Rio de Janeiro going back to Sao Paulo. It is not normal. It is crazy, you know. Mm. And the guy was preparing that. So uh, I went to Rio de Janeiro with that cooler box, but a different cooler box. And I have passed in Rio de Janeiro. I was not arrested Wow! with the drugs. So everything was paid off? No, not in Rio de Janeiro. Okay. It, was it was be going to be paid off in Sao Paulo. Oh, okay. You understand okay. me? So they know how weak they are. This thing is a spirit. It seemed like they, they work with spirit that if that person is supposed to see something, maybe they trigger in a spiritual realm that don't see this thing, you know? Like those police will be busy and just check fast and, you know, you move, let yeah. you go. Yeah. What happened afterwards, I was in Sao Paulo. Then uh, I checked in as they told me, you do as they said. Their will, not your will. Remember that they command you. Yeah. you know? So they commanded me. I checked in. It was not like me holding the cooler box. Then I checked in. I went to sit down. Remember, you must wait for the plane, you know, to, to arrive. Then I took this book. My God, I saw Land of them like... This plan is out. But before I, I've bought that book, I, 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 there is a number that I'm supposed to send it to them. Okay. Like I got the number then. I started sending it to this guy. And little did I know, I sent it to this guy. This guy sent it to the police and sent it to my uncle. So when I checked in, my uncle said, wow. Oh, snap. Ma, you spoke about you being in Brazil and... Now the ego was coming into you a lot and you were fighting so much, but you just wanted a vibe, you know. Mm -hmm. You were thinking of that Land Rover that you wanted to get when you were coming back from South Africa. Mm -hmm. What is it that literally made you to push yourself that, you know what, as much as God is talking to me, but let me just go ahead anyway? Self Spirit of selfishness. Oh, you know, we don't think... We just do. Like, for an example, imagine uh, in Brazil, the way they're speaking Portuguese. Mm. Firstly, attention, if you go there, you ask some other things. You pay, like, people, they get attention unto you because they know South Africans, if they come here, they're going to do what? Because I have lied in the airport that I'm going to buy clothes, you know. Even though I lied, but um, the, the syndicates, they know, even police, they know what is happening there, you know. Firstly, if you arrive there, you already ask people with English. It's, it's, it's a suspect. You are a suspect, mm. you know. So, but because of selfishness and self-interest that I, I want this thing, I want to get it, yeah? So you, you are like that, that, no, I want this thing, I will get it. But you don't think of the consequences uh, that you will, you, will, you will achieve after. Yeah. No, yes. So how did you end up being arrested eventually? Oh, I, I was sending this... Uh, numbers remember that i have to send the numbers that okay my number is this 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 and they said no because we have checked in because i'm supposed to be arrested immediately they you know in an airport if you send your things you're supposed to be arrested because that thing's supposed to show that the drugs are there but because of you know <laughs> i will say 419 how to they handle it you know how they did it i thought it was perfect you know but little did i know that the same person who gave me the drugs set me up and gave the police the number that was on my luggage. And they started to search while I was sitting, waiting for the flight to come. So what happened, he gave it to them. And then that time I was going to the plane because while the plane arrived, what happened and uh, they, the police, they were coming to me and then they just looking, looking. Then they came to me and said that, uh, are you Yvonne Cesar I said, yes. And then they started to say, come with us. I'm like, ah. It's a game. They usually do it. Ah, this game, maybe they will take me out because they've already paid. You know, ah, the game is over. Like, did I know that I'm going to prison? You know, and then they came and said that 
we got something in your luggage and we went to check it's you know it's a it's a real thing they checked and they said we got cocaine a real cocaine in your bag and it's 100 percent. so you're going to prison and i didn't believe even though they are saying so until they said no call somebody to tell them in the house i'm like no the game is over here so i started to call my uncle's wife and tell her that I was arrested. Then she was, no, everything went well because we got the number, you know. We already called the airport. No, how? And they thought maybe I'm joking because I want to do some, you know. And then they found out really I'm, I was arrested. My God, that day, it was another day unto me, you know. It was a, a day. It, 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 that, 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 that thing came while I was arrested and said, what I was doing really? But I was arrested already. Hmm. Let's talk about you getting into the Brazilian prison as a South African. How was it like? Uh, firstly, I can see the prison, <laughs> you know, firstly, not the prison. My own uncle sent me to Brazil. It came to my medulla oblongat and I'll say that, what kind of uncle is this one? But I'm starting to think of that thing if I'm in prison. But before, I didn't think that, you know, something will happen. Mm. And then here came bitterness, here came anger, here came unforgiveness unto me. I started to utter words, you know, in a prison because I'm alone now. Nobody's there. The, the guy is not there. I don't know anybody in Brazil, you know. And my uncle cannot call me. Where's the phone? There's no phone. So the letters I'm writing is not responding because, not responding because he hated me. Not responding because, on, because of fear that, mm. hey, maybe this one is going to take me to prison. He's going to, in, in court, you will speak the truth. And what happened? I didn't go to court immediately in Brazil. Okay. Because God was dealing with this anger. God mm. was dealing with this bitterness. God was dealing with me with the words that I uttered. That, okay, my uncle took me to prison. The same children, he, like for an example, his same children will go to the same process that he has done it in my life. But I forget that we agreed. There was an agreement. There is power in agreement. People today, they do agreement and literally the other one confess that what we agree, remember, that we kill the person, people they don't know, but we agreed that we're going to do such thing. You know, there's power in agreement. Even in prayer, there's um, uh, power in agreement. So what happened? I was so down. Bitterness was eating me. Unforgiveness was eating me. I didn't go to you. God never allowed me to go to God because I was wounded. You know, I, I was not healing that time. And then here comes this lady because they used to visit us in Brazil mm. and told me that there's something about you. You have to heal. Then I said, healing, why? Because I could not understand what is healing. If you tell people about healing, you know, forgiving the father of your child, even though he's not supporting your child, it's hard. You're thinking of how you pass to consequences with this child that was born. You agreed that let us have a, a, a child. That time you were together making that thing and then the the, is not there, the father of the child, uh, forgiving that person who has wounded you and raped you and thinking that that time there was anger and everything. So what happened? I cried. While that woman gave me that message, I cried, I cried. And then after I cried, God gave me peace. And here comes a voice, says, Agale, you must heal. After healing, it's where they called me to go to court. Hmm. Then I started to go to court but they didn't sentence me that time. While I was healing, my uncle was preparing uh, things for me now, you know, mm. for me to get some grocery and cosmetics and etc. There is power in healing, you know. And what I, I, I have loved about prison, you know, people, they said, uh, why my uncle? It's supposed to happen like that because God loved me. Because if God didn't love me, I don't supposed to go to prison. I supposed to die that time because my life was too fast. You know, it, it was a matter of money. It was a matter of selfishness, you know. But God allowed me to go to prison to pause and say, my child, I love you and I've called you by my name, you know. I could not understand the process, but the process was so good and clear because I went there for, for the reason because my life was a mess, you know. I look at my, because people today, they think money is everything, mm -hmm. you know. They said, yes, I know that you must have a roll on, you must have cream and etc. But did, do money give you peace? Mm? Because if you have, you'll buy an expensive things, 
after buying that expensive things you still want, you still want, there's no spirit of fulfillment, you know? So I was like that. Then I was sentenced in, 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 in Brazil. I stayed in prison. I was sentenced four years, eight months, but I stayed five years. God was working on my character because it was dirty character. God was working upon my flesh because it was weak allowing yes to go to Brazil, saying yes on things that are so materially that not, they don't even give you value. So God was working on my character too much that, let me tell you something, I'm going to teach you that if you are a human being, you must be content on what you have until you go somewhere. It is not your uncle. Yes, it happened. Your uncle did this. But I'm allowing you so that you may know that money is not everything. So my uncle started buying me things gradually, gradually. Then God wanted to see me that I'm accepting, even though it was that process, but God was showing me the love inside the prison. I've learned that I'm a motivational speaker, mm. firstly, that I know how to speak. And I was shy. Remember that I was working with drugs, but I was shy. But inside prison, God showed me that my weight is the one that you're going to live unto. And God was showing me that patience. While I was outside, I was not having patience. I, I wanted that thing now, and I must get it now, you know. Mm. But there, I was learning on a process of being persevering, having the perseverance, be patient, you know, because it was a process. And it was not easy because you stay in this cell, you get people with this character from Greece, from uh, Cabo Veggi, different people. God will show you this person has this character. And I learned about the name of Jesus that is higher than other other names. You know, before I went to prison, I was not saved, but I was going to church. Yeah. But I was consulting Ahmad Lozi. And I learned inside prison that, oh man, but let me try this name. You know, the name of Jesus. I started to pray in prison. No pastor has taught me how to pray. But in prison, I had a relationship with the Holy Spirit, with mm. Jesus Christ. So I, I, I had this relationship more than a man. Imagine I had a man in South Africa. But having a relationship with Jesus, I had peace, even though money was not there, but there was peace. And I started to, 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 to learn. Well, I read, I opened the Bible, reading the, that the Lord is my shepherd. God said, he's not your shepherd because of money. <laughs> I'm your shepherd because of the life that I give it to you. I'm your shepherd because you are alive today, says again. And I started to have an encounter with God. And I enjoyed being there. Not being in prison, but being with Jesus. You know, learning who is Christ in me. The hope of glory, you know. So it's when gradually, gradually, I started to speak to people. They used to call me in prison that uh, somebody's here, come. I'm like, oh, God, I have a gift, you know, because the Bible says, Jeremiah, I've called you. I foreknew you in your mother's womb that you are called by my name. You know, I already, you know, because if you have a calling, you'll pass through strange things. You pass through rejection. You pass through pain. And you say, but where is this God? But God will be there with you. No matter what you're passing through. He, you know, even the children of, of Israel, it was not easy unto them. They even created an idol and say, God, where are you? And God was there. You know, so true tribulation, true triumph, God is with you. And you said, God, but where are you? My fridge is empty. My children will sleep empty, but God will provide cabbage or maybe something else on that time. So I've learned that in my whole entire life, God taught me that there is no man that is more than me. Christ, the hope of glory. God taught me that it's only him in my life that will provide will send people. You know, people, they'll say, how God provide? Because he's not there. God is omnipresent, omnipresent. He's present. If you pray, the Holy Spirit uh, intercedes for you and is the, your advocate is able to go and touch your neighbor or touch that person to say, come, you, I remembered you today. I don't know why. And it's how God speaks. So I had a relationship with Jesus Christ inside prison and God is alive. I don't care who says what. I just saw God in my life working mysteriously, taking that dirtiness because in started inside prison, I started to smell. God started to take that fornication, that adultery, that lust, that self-content thing, that since again, you must do the, that thing. And God started to, to cleanse my life, to say, you are a new creation now. Mm. Wow. You living prison, um, coming to South Africa, did your uncle reach out to you that, look, let's do this again? Yes. When I came back, remember, I had a daughter. 
you know. Yeah. Uh, there is something I want to tell somebody, like maybe he or she was in prison. Mm. There are correspondence that you write to them. You know, sometimes even though God speaks, even though you you are saved. Excuse me. There is this rebellious voice. You say, "Yes, God is there, but let me try by my own, you know, strength." I met somebody. I don't want to. In in my other interviews, I speak about that. But the healing is in me. You know, I've got the daughter. God has given it to me. True, a man. You know that God has sent because God's will is is another thing. The things of God are mysterious. Are not known by men. So when I was in Brazil, Brazil I got a baby. What, you know why? God wanted me to not keep on repeating and doing that thing. He said, I will hold with this daughter mm. and you don't keep on doing wrong things. So I call it a beautiful daughter. God, my God, I'm so proud to say I'm a mother today. I have one daughter today and my past are gone. I'm leaving the presence. Now I'm going somewhere. I'm not going back there that my father of my child did what? No, I'm not there. I'm going in front because I have to forgive and have the spirit of forgiveness. So I've forgiven him and I'm living my life with my daughter. You know, so when I came back, my uncle, same uncle, approached me. Remember that I said I've forgiven him. Yeah. I went to stay with him in the same house. God said, okay, sister, again, let's see. Here's the daughter, now here's your uncle. Show up. My God, it was not easy. I'm saved, saving God, and he's not saved. But I have to be patient with him. And then he approached me and said, sister, again, and came, you know, with a rapper. I said, but you, it's you used to do this thing. Come on. Let's do it. You know how the devil will do things, mm -hmm. you know. And then I said, this Sizagele is not that Sizagele anymore. I am not empty anymore. You know, my f voice raised because of the inner man that is in me. I said, I am not going to do this. I have a daughter to take control. He said, what, I'm going to, what are you going to eat you? Eh? You think that is, this is Brazil, <laughs> where you were preaching, your God, your God. Where is your God? People, they think that if you, 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 you have God, they said, you'll be poor now. You'll be poor in spirit. If you are poor, you're poor in mind. If you are poor, you're poor in the spirit. And you think that if you are poor, you'll be poor with money. No, money does not have the spirit of fulfillment. Why are you taking that money and going to buy another, uh, that somebody like your child and give him or her that money than you giving the person the money without you? that person sucking you or doing anything that is poverty mentality you know so even though you can have money you can be poor you know so I, I i came back filled with the power of god with the word of god saying that i'll be fulfilled of what god is going to give me so i came back my uncle tried but i didn't do it not because of my own instead because of the grace of god that is upon my life mm. what are the lessons that you learned with what happened in Brazil, when you came back, you're like, okay, cool. This is what I've learned. I've learned that don't rush, you'll crash. <laughs> Rushing, it, it is another thing. Um, or listening to voices that tell you that uh, you're beautiful, you can get this man, you know? I'm sorry to say that, but it's the truth. And um, uh, if you rush, you fall. But if you can be patient, like in, like for an example, in your marriage, like for an example, in everywhere, we don't ask God about our marriages, you know, but if you can be patient with that person and if you can be patient or on that person as God has changed my life, sis, again, like for an example, you know, our children are taking drugs now, ne? and you are not patient with her or with him. You said, ah, this person, and but you are, you have born this person. If you can be persistent and pray and be patient and be perseverant and you win that soul of your daughter or son on drugs, so I have learned that be patient on whatsoever that God is about to bless you with. Mama, thank you so much for coming.